Hello everyone, as you know I am Paul your eHobby guy and in today's video we will be looking at this piece of equipment. It serves two functions, one of which is it will calculate the capacity of a rechargeable battery and the second one is it can put a constant current load on something that you may want to test for that reason. We are going to take a thorough look at this, look at its limitations, its flexibility, we're going to put it to the test and see how it performs. So let's jump right in. First things first, I do like to take a look in general at the workmanship and to see if there's any outstanding flaws that just jump off of it. But in general, the workmanship of this looks pretty good. The only thing that really just kind of jumps off is if you look at this barrel jack connector it is crooked it's a little crooked which is doesn't make a big deal if i was mounting it up against a housing wall that might be an issue i'm probably not going to do that if that's not too much of a concern another thing that i do like to look at and this is where you would put um, your power source your battery is the strength of the connector and so under here we have the two pins of this terminal block soldered. I usually just shake this and it, it is somewhat loose. It would need some mechanical strength. So it's something to be aware of. And so if you're tightening and loosening several wires many times over and over, this may fatigue and even break. It's something I might consider later. Looking around here, everything else looks good. I don't know how clear I can get this here, but under here we have a crystal oscillator and there's a buzzer here. It's too dark in there, but there is a processor in there. So I am curious as to what kind of processor they're using in there. So I think I'm going to pop this board off. It looks like we only have two screws and a single line uh, of header pins right here. So let's do that. The two screws are out, so I'm just going to try and carefully lift that up and off. Yeah, that was pretty easy. Here is the processor. It's an STM8S. Let's look at the data sheet right here. Yes, the data sheet is showing that it is a 16 megahertz processor, 8-bit. It's got a 10-bit analog to digital converter with three timers and three modes of communication similar. These exact three we get with the Arduino, of course. Anyway, that's, uh, that's it. I was just curious and now my, my curiosity has been satisfied. Looking over the board here, you can see three LEDs here, volts, amp hour, and watt hour. We have two other LEDs here that are green, A, I'm assuming, which stands for amps, and a run, red LED. There's a push button here for start and stop. Here we have a rotary encoder that has a push button action. Looking a bit further here, looks like a shunt here I can see the board just because of this uh, shunt it's taking all of the current through here right next to the terminals the board is sliced might be clearer from underneath here you can see the slice so that shunt is for current measuring reasons little inductor here here we have a, a huge heat sink with a built-in fan and from what I've read and I just read a little bit about it the fan is variable speed, so based on how hot this, which is probably a MOSFET, I'm not sure, we can check that out, but the fan will go faster the more heat it needs to dissipate. And right here is a thermistor, so it is measuring the temperature of this heat sink and will speed up the fan based on uh, its temperature uh, in an effort to keep it cool, of course. Now, over here we have the terminal blocks that say P plus and P minus which is where we would attach our battery. There's a V plus and a V minus here for a JSK or a JST connector. So you can hook up four wire batteries to this and it will auto detect if it is a four wire battery in series and will test accordingly. I think we need to hook something up to it and go over how to use it. So let's get something hooked up here. I did pay $18.69 for mine. It was free shipping. It came from this seller, Winter Z. However, it did not come with instructions. And so I did have to look quite extensively around. I did find some translated Chinese instructions, 
which were very difficult to understand but I did get an overall view that was thorough and so we're going to go through the functionality of this how to operate it and how to use it in its two functions that it can provide. Here I have a fully charged cheap Chinese 18650 lithium ion battery it's claiming 5000 milliamp hours and this is a cheap makeshift battery holder that I made that you should not try at home I made this before I actually got some other ones in the mail here some proper plastic ones but I did have it ready it's fully charged and so I'm just gonna wire it in right in here and we'll put a load on it and we'll go through the settings and operation so here I have my battery hooked up into these two terminals and the recommended input voltage for this is 11 to 14 they recommend a 12 volt power supply so here I have 12 volts that I will just give it power up here the fan started up there now you see a couple it's not abundantly clear maybe I'll kill the lights here to make it more clear so you can see three volts and one amp into two dials here I'm just going to show you the push button variation that you can make on the amp and the voltage readings here and what they mean pushing this button switches you through different modes when this LED here, the one right next to the A, is lit, we can adjust the amp setting. When this upper LED here is lit, right next to the V, we can adjust the voltage setting. There's two green LEDs right here. When we are in the adjust amp setting, there is a coarse adjustment and a fine adjustment. And pressing this button changes you from the coarse adjustment to the fine adjustment. If I press it again, it goes up to the voltage adjustment mode and it automatically jumps into the coarse voltage adjustment setting. Press it again, it changes to the fine voltage adjustment setting. We can cycle through like this. And so I will adjust it just to show you. So now I'm in the voltage adjustment setting, in the coarse setting, and so I can switch by volts. 7, 8, 9, 10 volts. If I press again, we get into the fine voltage adjustment we're changing by 0.1 volts in the course setting we change by 1 volt if I press it again we go down to the amps and so in the course adjustment in the amps we're changing by 0.1 amps in the fine adjustment setting we change by 0.01 amps or 10 milliamps now what do these numbers specifically mean the voltage setting is a cutoff voltage setting. We know that the cutoff voltage for this battery is going to be 3 volts as per the spec sheet. And so I'm going to leave this at 3 volts. The current is the constant current that it's going to put on this battery. We're going to place a one current load on this battery and it's going to discharge from its current voltage all the way down to 3 volts and then it's going to stop. At that time, the beeper is going to beep. There are two modes that we can use with this, and I'll show you exactly how to go from one mode to the other. So I'll do a quick review on how to select the two modes. And that happens, again, when it's powered down and you're bringing it into the powered up state. So I'm just going to power it down real quick. When powering up, you have to press and hold the run button before you power it up. Press and hold. And you'll be pre presented with the last function that it was set on, which is function 1. This is the constant current running mode. We can change that to function 2 by twisting the knob to function 2. And to select function 2, we just press the run button. And that scrolls us on to the beeper on or beeper off. I'll leave the beeper on. And then we press again to get into the ready to run mode. And it displays the two settings, the 3 volt dropout voltage and the 1 amp of constant current that we need. Again, I'm going to switch from this function 2 to function 1. To do that, we power down, press and hold the run button, power up and hold. It's in function 2, which is the amp hour test. I'm going to twist the knob to function 1, press the run button scrolls me on to the beeper on I'm going to keep that and press the button again and now again we're into the ready to run mode with the dropout voltage of 3 volts and a constant current of 1 amp again I'm going to switch back to function 2 
which is the amp hour watt hour rating and I'm going to test this battery and my other battery that I have right over here we'll test those again and look at the amp hour and watt hour ratings for that so switch the mode again here we go I'm going to press and hold run keep it held it's on function one it remembered the last running function twist to function two which is the amp hour watt hour test select by pressing the run select run again to accept the beeper on setting i do still want the three volts drop off voltage and the one amp constant current drain on this battery and so i'm just going to start this test right now and we'll come and i'll do the second one and we'll compare those results to get started i'm just going to press the run button and this red led will come on There's the voltage of the battery, 3.8 volts, amp hour, watt hour, and you can see it's scrolling through these three readings, which is voltage, amp hour, and watt hour. Okay, here we are. Um, I can see the amp hour rating right here of 0.44. I'm just going to press this. 0.444 on this battery. 1.569 watt hours and uh, the battery voltage did jump back up pretty quickly so i'm going to stick with this as 0.44 amp hours 1.569 watt hours on this battery one single run i'm going to switch it over to this battery and we'll see how this one performs so here's this battery hooked up um, nice and tightly i'm just going to write down the values i got for the previous battery 0.444 amp hours 1.569 watt hours clear these we press and hold and we're back and you'll see that there's a two amp setting here during the last test i wanted to speed it up a little i guess i got a little impatient so i did change it and you can do that by pausing adjusting the amps and then hitting run again this is the pause and run button so we're going to set this battery into a test right now and I'll get back when it's finished. Here we are, we've just uh, maxed into this. Uh, again, this is a very low amp hour rating. So we stopped on the amp hour. I'll just press this once to silence it and go to the watt hour. So this battery is really not that good. You can see the voltage is rising up again. So this is bad. Uh, I know what it is. I'm just using it to play around and not into any projects or anything. The second one that I had, this one, is better. But I am just going to write down 163 amp hour. Uh, 0.551 watt hours. In wrapping up here, I don't have right now a means of checking the readings of this against something else, something that might be calibrated, but I do have another device that I'm going to use in the upcoming video to see if how this compares to that other device. I'm also going to look at a third method, which is only going to use measurements of voltage and current, along with a time constant, and I'm going to empirically graph and calculate what the actual amp hour rating is. It's going to be interesting to see how these three methods compare to each other for uh, single batteries and how they fare. So what we've talked about today is how to use this product to measure amp hours and watt hours. And also if you wanted to just to put a constant load on an energy source if you wanted to do that. But what we haven't talked about is the correct method to test these lithium ion batteries. Should I put a 1 amp load on it, 2 amp, 5 amp, 8 amps? What's the correct method? And they would all yield different results. That is the topic of another upcoming video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of, of when this video is coming out. With that said, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I really do appreciate your support. Give it a like if it was helpful to you in any way. Follow me on social media. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.